So dear students, today I am here with the poem The Solitary Reaper written by Willie Wordsworth who is a nature poet. And this poem is a romantic ballet poem and it's set in rural areas. So Wordsworth got inspiration to write this poem from a village in Scotland which he visited along with his sister Dorothy Wordsworth in the year 1803. The poem has been divided into four stanzas and each stanza has eight lines. Each stanza also follows the same rhyme scheme and that is A, B, A, B, C, C and D, D. Okay? First stanza of the poem goes like this. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Oh listen, for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. So here, the poet wants to say that one day while he was traveling, he sees a lass, that's a girl, from Highland. So Highland is basically hilly area. So this girl was all alone there. And what was she doing there? She was reaping the crops. Reaping is harvesting the crops and singing songs by herself. The poet is so mesmerized and enchanted by the song that he asked the passers-by to stop there and listen to her song. He also requests the passers-by, if they are not interested, they can gently pass by, gently go away from there without disturbing her because she is engrossed in doing her work. The solitary reaper is cutting and binding the grains and singing a melancholy strain. So uh, melancholy strain means sad song. And at the same time, the poet asks the passers-by to listen to her song because it's so melodious and sad that the whole valley is echoing. So, whale profound means deep valley is echoing with her song. The second stanza says, No nightingale did ever chant More welcome notes to weary bands Of travellers in some shady haunt Among Arabian sands a voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. So here, in the second stanza, the poet compares the voice of the solitary reaper with that of the nightingale. Now before proceeding, let me first tell you about the Arabian sands mentioned in the stanza. So in Arab, what happens? The thar is a huge desert and it takes months for the people to cross it. So many times they forget the way or they die because of extreme heat or thirst. So the poet is talking about those weary band of travelers who are actually traveling through the desert. And they say that when they come and take rest under the shady tree that is present in the desert and they happen to hear the nightingale chanting, it is a very joyful voice for them because they will come to know that it is the end of the dread desert. The poet says that the voice of the solitary reaper is more melodious and sweeter than that of the nightingale's voice mentioned above. Then the poet also compares the song of the solitary reaper to the voice of the cuckoo bird. So what does the cuckoo bird do? The cuckoo bird breaks the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides and Hebrides are basically a group of 500 islands in Scotland. So the poet wants to say that the cuckoo bird is popular to break the silence in the springtime. Again according to the poet, the voice of the solitary reaper is better even than the sound of the cuckoo. The third stanza says, will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old and happy far off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today? Some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been and may be again. In this stanza, the poet is expressing his unfamiliarity with the language of the song that the solitary reaper is singing. He wonders if there is anyone who will be able to tell him what she's singing about. And finally, because there is nobody else to ask, he himself starts guessing. And he says, because of the plaintive numbers used, the poet presumed that she was singing a sad, mournful song. 
in her own language that is the scottish language and the poet was not aware about this language so the poet thinks that she might be thinking about unhappy past or lost things or maybe some battle that had taken place long ago the poet also says that maybe uh, you know she is thinking about some ordinary day which is a day to day matter it can be some natural sorrow or loss or pain which might have been in the past or it may happen to be again the last stanza says whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and o'er the sickle bending i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more so this is the final stanza and here the poet says that whatever may be the theme of the song sung by the maiden she sang so sweetly and so profoundly that the poet wished it would never end the poet repeats the beginning scene and according to him he saw her singing at her work and what work was she doing reaping the crop and while she was bending her sickle sickle is the uh, instrument which is used to harvest the crop the poet listened to her silently without making any movement however when he started traveling up the hill he could not hear her but the music that he heard was still there in his heart it was still echoing in his heart that's all for today in case of any doubts or queries you can drop us a message on instagram or you can also drop them in the comment section below i'll revert to them as soon as possible see you in the next video till then bye bye